All right, in the next few minutes, I'm going to look at softer.io. And honestly, the final piece in my no code puzzle uh, for projects I've been working on for customers. And what we're going to see here is why I really think this is an important part of my no code framework. Uh, so it lets me build for customers the solutions they need for their internet sites. Uh, I won't talk about external sites, just yet, sites that you are maybe trying to use for marketing or SaaS products uh, when they're external facing. But honestly, internal facing sites, uh, CRMs, inventory management, so many things. Uh, this is it. Uh, sure, I, I love vibe coding and I like all the cloud code and stuff, but I need predictability for customers. I need to be able to quote the job and get it done. Uh, and the drag and drop interface with uh, Softer does that. And then the integration with N8N is just the final piece, the final connecting point to make events happen. And chat. I'm going to show you at the end a chat component I made for Softer that you can use as well. All right, really take this in. And don't let the pricing throw you off. I'll talk about that at the end. All right, let's take a look at Softer and go log in, sign up. And this is the back end. This is what you as the developer or the company, maybe your company has a Softer account uh, and that client has five different applications here. You can see here I'm signed up at $139 a month. And I'm going to explain pricing later how that intimidating pricing can really be reduced uh, if you consider the, 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 the division of usage you'll see as we get through this. Now, these are some apps I have here, and this is just a template that they create or created for me. I mean this one here, the other one too, actually. Um, and so it's really easy to get started, and um, all you have to do is kick off. Now, you can use their templates, and you can actually make your own templates, which is really cool because many times clients want me to do the same thing over and over again. And if I do something for them and I'm not going to give them this back end, uh, I can then make it and give them the front end. And uh, it would be like a new application for that client, almost like a SaaS repetition project. Now, if you look, um, these are their templates. So talk about getting started quickly. And again, I'll save the pricing for later, but you got to remember, uh, I won't even go there because we'll talk about pricing later. But you have all these templates to get you going with the tables and structures you need and, and, and then the UI you need around that to just get the job done. Um, so let's go dig into this one. Uh, this is the CRM template. Now, we're still in the back end mode. We're looking at the app and the builder UI, uh, the interface, the data and users. And um, let's stick to the interface for a moment because I want to show you the data after because it's really cool. Pages are the pages you're building and working on. They might not show up in a navigation for the user later on, but they're here. And you really don't navigate here to use the back end. This is how you build the front end. Um, now, I'll, I'll explain what that means in a moment as we dig in the data. But right here, you can see I can um, alter the navigation that shows up in the front of the site. Uh, and then I can um, change that there. And then these are blocks, which we're used to in external uh, wrapper blocks and all the stuff we typically are used to in building stuff. But I think even non-developers or non-builders can really suss this out. Now, charts, cards. Now, I mean, come on. Some of the stuff isn't like the most modern looking web app ever. But for internet or internal sites, this is great. And then you have their database, which I'm going to show in a moment. It's quite adequate for a lot of work customers need. We don't have to scale. Not everything's in quotes enterprise. Uh, that is the most BS statement ever. Um, but they, it just, this is perfect. It works. Uh, you can filter the pages based off the user's email who might own these things. I'm going to remove it because I, I just want to see everything for a moment and we'll publish it in a moment. Um, and then I guess at a default sort. Now they remove that. And now you have content where we can choose the, the fields for that block. So here we have a block of, of uh, contacts. And then we have their particular um, top items and bottom items. Now, actions are cool, too, because you can add these action buttons that represent uh, what you can do in those cards to click on and go to different pages or delete uh, and more. Um, let me see if I could find something here. One moment. Um, I think I'm going to go look for a table just so I can show you that. Let me go. Not, um, not the detail page. One moment. Uh, context. So in a table, it just makes more visual sense for me. You have content and each row has items. 
And so you can add these action items for the top of the comp component or for each line. In this case, we added a delete. But see, we don't see the delete there. Uh, you'll see it when you click preview. And then when you click preview, you can go in here and get a quick preview of what you just built and do the things you just did to, you know, that you added. And so right there, you can see how you can add action item line items for component for the line of data there. You can even trigger API calls, which is really huge because you can call any then to do actions for you later on. Uh, so just, I mean, a lot comes out of this so easily. When you publish it, it goes to their URL, but you can easily add your URL. Now let's look at data uh, and then we'll look at users more. So, um, uh, so here we have um, the softer database. It's almost like an air table, but it's not disconnected from your application. And it's really easy to use, which is great for users. Non-database admins can now manage their data in a way you never imagined if you want them to or if they want to. Uh, they can get back here and just do things that they're used to doing in Sheets or in Airtable, but now in a place that actually is more powerful. Uh, powerful because it helps you just kind of centralize everything here. A lot of things we'll see where they do automations with NADN, and it really comes down to spreadsheets, and not formulas and spreadsheet stuff, but just tables with data. And here we can easily make these tables with data and then have other tables and then relate them through proper database relationships, which users can learn to do. Uh, so in this case, um, let's see here, let me find a good example. So this one is a, well, hold on, let me just check here. I'm going to go publish this and look one moment. So hopefully I publish it here. I'm logged in and I'm going to show you where this comes together in a moment. So I'm going to, we just grab some information to sign out. Uh, and then once I'm signed out, one moment. Okay, let me sign out. And then once I sign back in, um, you get this nice login page, which of course you can alter. And then I'll just sign in. Hopefully this is the right username password. There we go. Perfect. And now we, we got our everything we built before with our item actions and our data. And even to the point where I couldn't see this before uh, because the context page didn't allow my particular role to do it. So I, I added myself as an admin and boom, I can now see that. So you really get role level or, or, or component level security here. And you got search and things like that. All right, let's go back to the, now this is the front end. This is what we built. This could be what you hand over to staff to use or, or to users that you want to manage more and not have them have just raw access to the database. But for the power users or just for you, the person building it for them, uh, you have the moment to do the stuff in the database. All right, let's dig into the N8N nodes on this. And if we just do our typical search, we'll see software in here. If you don't see it, you might have to install it as a community node. I had to install it here, but it was kind of like one of those approved community nodes or something where I had to install it. But this is not self-hosted, so maybe it's a little different. Um, but once you get it going, you have all your awesome basic stuff, updates, deletes, search. And uh, you even have triggers, which is just cool because now on a record update or delete, we can, or, or create, we can have reactions and events, which is just it. We're, we're done. It's just key. Now, the, adding the API is super easy. You go to your dashboard, click API keys and grab it, and boom, you're done. Now, when you have the credentials in place, you could then choose the, the um, area or the tables you want to query or whatever. And then, you know, one of the little tricks here is getting to know your IDs and keys and values, since a lot of stuff is abstracted out to numbers and strings. So later on, when we're looking at tables and columns and stuff, we're going to have to just kind of get a sense of, well, it's not column name or column email, it's column 55JKLZ or something. So you just kind of keep an eye out for that. So I actually leave... Uh, this node here so I can just continue to query my data in a way that lets me see um, the particular um, strings and values that represent the column names and, and table names and everything. And that will make more sense as we go on. Don't worry about that. So now we're going to just add a simple chat widget here, which will later on plug in a widget to uh, to let us chat with the data. Now, uh, we'll do the typical chat node, and then we'll just do this and do this and drag this over. And ignore my two set ones here. I am going to rename one of them. But 
This is just how I do it. And you'll see in one of my videos, the set node video, why I do it this way. It's really, really handy. I'll link it to you uh, in a moment. But once, uh, let me just rename this one moment. But once this is in place, we can now chat with our data by just adding it as a tool. Uh, so this is really powerful, and you can now add your tool to, say, get all the deals. And I'll just make a description, get all the deals, and then I'll give it a name. I mean, again, we got all these tools. We can add deals, companies, contacts, add, delete, update. So you'll see how this will just really basically make an MCP agentic system around our data i mean it's just a done deal i mean it's just that simple no hype no future promise now in this case we can chat with our deals so let's just uh let's just open a chat window i have memory going so we're all set there and uh for some reason i have to sort things i don't know why uh let me just click save and then we just start chat and that's it, we're, we're chatting with our data. All right, now what we're gonna do is take this chat widget and plug it into our software. And then from there, we're gonna trigger events and other things. All right, so now let's see how we can get the classic N8N chat widget in place. Uh, of course, we wanna make it look better, but you know, we're gonna get the gist of it here, okay? So how did that just trigger a chat here? Uh, let's go look how that happened. Now, to begin with, I'm cheating. I made a standalone JavaScript uh, file that anyone can use. And you just plug in the script, the CSS, and then the chat uh, ID into any page. And you can use this. Anyone can use this. It's public. Uh, and you can use your own CDNs by just downloading those files or the repo and uploading those files. Okay, so once that is set up, all I had to do was go into software and go into custom settings. And then here, go into custom code. And then this top area, which is the head area, I added the style. And then the bottom area, which is the uh, area before the end of the body, I added the script with my actual URL. And then um, I had to go to a page. So uh, I would have to add this to every page I want chat. But I'm just going to put it here for a moment, uh, which is my dashboard. I think so. And I added a custom component. And then here, I just added the div I need to take over. And that's it. So now when we publish that, so we have to publish it and go there, our chat will show up. And of course, my chat, uh, I would easily or definitely just uh, add the password there as well. But we, we allow origin uh, so that we can get to it. All right, but that is it. You have chat. Now we'll do events. All right, this one really, really is a big deal. And I made a new workflow here. And uh, if we go into the editor for a moment, um, all I did was add a new trigger. So I looked up softer. And in here, they have a trigger. So a trigger will be triggered when something happens outside of any or outside of your workflow. On this one, I want an updated record trigger. And when I add that, I get this guy here with a account I set up earlier every minute. I was already set. I chose the CRM and the deals. And then this one, I just chose a day before because I wanted to start doing it. And limit 50 records, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, and now when I click save and enable it, we're ready to go. And now what that means is if I change a record, now imagine this, Hey, we have these deals. It's a proposal. Uh, let's see if I can edit this. Let's see here. Here it is. One. We can now automate our system that changing it to one would then hit our N8N where we could trigger emails, we could trigger next steps in the workflow, on and on and on. Now it takes a minute to show up and that's fine. But the point is once that comes in, you can do anything you want. So like, look, this is, let's look at this other one that came in. So here we see, um, uh, this is the account manager account. 
ID of the record. Um, and probably what changed if I was a guess. Um, but basically at this point, we can like send emails out to people or react in a way that moves the next step into the process. Maybe we have to generate a task list for the next customer or sorry, the next um, account manager. All these things we can just do from that change. So I can't express enough how awesome this is that we can trigger any then based on row level updates and, and, and inserts. Really, really powerful. All right, that is a big win there. And I, I'm going to get to pricing now. All right, lastly, let's talk pricing. Because at first I was a little bit like, ah, oh, wow, this is a lot of money. Now, one client with, you know, or me as a freelancer or me as a person working for one company. Um, you know, 50 bucks for a site would be a lot, but this isn't. This is three sites, three internal applications. So if you look at it as me as a freelancer building three applications for three different customers, then, you know, I could, I could do that. And when they get their front end application and there's three customers at 30, 50, whatever, hundred bucks a month, not hundred bucks, 50 bucks, hundred bucks a month times three, that's like 150 bucks. So I'm actually making money. And then when you get into 139, same thing. And I could just do more. So I can't see a loss here. You would not let them in the back end because they're going to just see the front end you build for them. Now, for the company, if you work for a company and then they have 10 or 5 or whatever internal applications and they can go from back end to front end, then it's a big win as well because they're getting multiple back end systems, no deployments. I mean, the money alone that they're saving on your work is just, it's so well worth it. And then you as a freelancer, uh, again, your productivity is going to just go out the, out the sky or whatever, out the window, whatever they say, because you're just going to be getting stuff done, not deploying or dealing with that stuff. And um, I just don't see a loss there. I, it, I just, I haven't figured this one out in the sense of like, where am I not, where, what's my blind spot? But right now... All I see is opportunity here as a developer, both a freelancer, uh, and if you're working with a dedicated small company or medium or large that just needs to build intranet sites over and over again.